In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate beta using Excel. So the first thing we are going to want to do is download the weekly closing price of a particular stock from the past five years. So in this case, I just chose Apple here. We're going to click on historical data and we're going to want to change the frequency to weekly. Uh, you can do daily, but most people find it better to do weekly. There's just a lot of noise using daily and then time period let's say for the past five years. It doesn't really matter how long you do this. Some people do 10 years, some people do three years. Um, I choose to use five years and click done, hit apply, and then download your data. So this is for the individual company. You download the data, it goes onto an Excel spreadsheet, and then you're going to want to do the same exact thing for the S&P 500. Okay, so historical data, frequency change to weekly, and time period change to a span of five years. So I go back to 2012 here because it's 2017 right now. So click done and then apply and download the data. Okay, so now we've just downloaded we've just downloaded the data for Apple and the data for the S&P 500. And you see all of this here. Let me just set this up for you um, so that it doesn't take up another five minutes of your time. And you should be able to figure out how I jump from one step to another here. So let me just do this really quickly. All right, so as you can see, the only thing I really did was delete everything except for the adjusted closing price for Apple and the adjusted closing price for the S&P 500. So in order to calculate beta, we will first need to calculate weekly returns for both Apple and the S&P 500. And to calculate these returns, we are simply going to want to hit the equal sign. I'll click on the adjusted price and divide it by the previous week's price, minus one. Make sure you put, uh, uh, put minus one into there and then click enter. And now that is Apple's return from 2-27 to 3-6. Okay, and you can drag this over and that will be the S&P 500's return for the same week. And then you can dra drag this all the way down to the very last data point. But make sure you don't go to this data point. Go to right here um, because this won't give you a number anyway. And it it'll screw up your data. So make sure you drag that all the way down. And you might want to just label these to just so you know uh, what you're dealing with here. So this is the returns for Apple and the returns for S&P 500. Okay, so we're actually almost done here, guys. It, it really is not too complicated to understand, and once you watch this video, you'll realize it's, it's not too hard to do. So, now I'm gonna show you two different ways to calculate beta. The first one is using the slope tool, and the next one that I'm gonna show you is using the regression tool. So first, let's try to get out, let's try out the slope tool. And what we're trying to calculate here is the relationship between the S&P 500 returns and Apple's returns. So to do this, we are going to click equals slope, put a parenthesis sign, and then you'll see this. It says known Y's and known X's. What does this mean? Well, Apple's returns will be the Y value because it's the individual company. So remember that the, the individual company that you're looking at, that will be the Y value. And the X value will be the indexes. Um, returns okay so the s&p 500 in this case will be the known x's so you're just going to want to highlight all of this for known y's all of apple's returns for all 260 weeks or 61 apparently and go up to the top put a comma and then do the exact same thing for known x's so click them and scroll all the way down to the bottom we're almost done here for the slope tool and make sure you just end it off with a parenthesis um, in the end and then click enter and that right there is your beta you just calculated beta that's how simple it is with the slope tool um, but let me just show you the regression tool because the regression tool can be very useful especially if you're trying to get more in-depth a more in-depth analysis of all the data that you're looking at so this is the second method here Make sure that you have the data analysis tool pack. Um, you might have to download that, but we're going to click on data analysis and find regression on here. Click OK. And you'll see input Y range and input X range. Now, this is actually pretty much the same thing that you just did. Um, so once again, the Y range is Apple's returns 
and the X range is the index's returns. So for the Y range, we're going to click Apple's returns, scroll all the way down, doing the exact same thing, but this is going to give you a lot more data points. It's something really good to know. Um, it's, it's definitely worth the extra minute of, of your time to look at this. And then the input X range is going to be the S&P 500, all of those data points. And once we get to the bottom here, it's a fast way of doing this, but I wanted to show you guys how to, um, that you actually have to select all the data points. You don't have to click anything here. Uh, you'd probably want a new worksheet ply and then just click OK. And it'll come up with a new sheet here. And this is your data that you got from the regression output. And it can look a little confusing at first. You might have done this in your statistics class, possibly. I know I certainly did in my statistics class. Uh, but what we have here is R square. And uh, this actually doesn't look too bad here. Uh, but we have n number of observations, 260 weeks. That looks about right. We have the intercept, and w uh, which is just measuring the constant uh, that goes along with the equation. And then the x variable 1, uh, which is right here, which... Huh, what do you know? It's the same exact number as what you got with the slope tool. This is your beta right here. Uh, just remember that coefficients, x variable 1, that is your beta right there. So you can see it's the same exact number. You just calculated beta, two different methods. Um, if you have any questions, guys, leave some comments down below. Ask me some questions. I'm willing to, to answer them. I, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And have a great day.